The trouble with steam pumps, this is part two, looking inside the pump to find the problem. From my experience of working on these simplex or weir type pumps, it's always the shuttle piston that's at fault. This pump works perfectly on compressed air, but the minute you hit it with steam, it behaves erratically and sometimes doesn't work at all. So the only thing for it is to take it apart, have a look inside, fix the problem, put it back together, and with a bit of luck it should work. This pump was designed and built by my friend Don English, and the design of it is identical to the small single cylinder pump that I described in the previous episode. The only difference being is it's a lot bigger, and it has an exhaust pipe. Before I can slide off the first steam chest, I need to just loosen the oil supply pipe. And once that is loosened and out of the way, I can easily remove the steam chest. As I start the strip down process, you can see the quality of the engineering of the pump. In this clip, I'm taking off the top cap, and I can't help but thinking about the possibility of putting a gland in the centre of this cap. With an extension shaft on the shuttle piston, it would at least allow me to move the piston up and down without moving the cap. As you can clearly see from this clip, there's a hole part the way through the piston. This hole is threaded 6BA and I've screwed in a 6BA bolt to illustrate this. If I apply some compressed air to the bottom port, the piston shoots to the top of the cylinder. If I apply some compressed air to the top port, it just blows out of the hole, as you can see. This illustrates more or less how the pump works. The primary slide valve slides up and down on this port, admitting and exhausting the steam from the shuttle piston cylinder. Here are both of the parts on the bench. As you can see, there's a shuttle piston cylinder, complete with its slide valve on the left, and in the centre of the picture is the other slide valve, and that is operated by a valve rod. In this part of the clip, I'm attempting to remove the shuttle piston from the cylinder, and it doesn't want to come out. Having a close-up look at the block, you can see that there's a liner fitted. This is a good idea, because if the shuttle piston cylinder ever wears, you can replace it. Finally, I got the shuttle piston out from the other end after removing some parts. And here it is, fitted in my lathe chuck. I'm not turning the outer diameter here. I'm just chamfering the inner part, like this. Because originally it was burred at this point, that's why the shuttle piston was reluctant to come out of the cylinder. In this clip, I'm just turning the end. I'm just making a bit of a recess. If you watched the video when I worked on the small pump, I'm doing exactly the same on this one. In this clip, I'm having a quick refit of the shuttle piston in the cylinder. To be perfectly honest, the O-rings feel a little bit on the tight side. And there are two at each end. Why are there two at each end? Well, I would guess that at the time Don built this pump, maybe he didn't have any of the thicker 5 16 of an inch diameter O-rings in stock. Here, I'm removing the O-rings. You just squeeze them together and pull upwards. These silicone O-rings split and tear very easily, so you must use a blunt tool to remove them. And here you can see two very thin O-rings. This is my box of silicone steam grade O-rings. And I have a good stock of 5 16 O-rings. This one fits in the cylinder perfectly. But I can't use this O-ring in the current shuttle piston because the groove is too wide and not deep enough. This clip that's on screen at the moment is after I deepened the groove because I had a thought that maybe when the shuttle piston gets hot and expands it was pushing the O-rings out too tightly against the wall of the cylinder. With everything cold at the moment, the shuttle piston is a better fit in the cylinder. It's a little bit looser. I think it's time to check what the fit's like of the slide valve on the recess in the shuttle piston. And it's OK, but there is some evidence of a bit of burring going on. I'm using a small needle file to clean up the inside of the slide valve. It's very important that slide valves are a slack fit on the shafts. The need to float... It's the pressure of the steam that holds the slide valve against the port face. It would probably have been better if this slide valve had been machined from a piece of square block rather than round bar. That way the edges of it would have been square and less likely to get burred during operation. As can clearly be seen, it's not a tight fit at all now. And if I turn the cylinder block over, the valve falls out onto the bench. It's time now to reassemble the pump and see if it works starting with the valve rod operating assembly. This also doubles as the lower cover on the shuttle valve cylinder. A word of caution, these are short stainless steel bolts into brass, so it's very important not to over-tighten them. 
I once bought a pump via eBay and nearly all of the bolts had been sheared off and stuck back in the holes, using super glue. I don't know how some people can live with themselves doing that. I don't mean from a mechanical point of view, that's irrelevant, but just tarting it up to sell. At each of the reassembly steps I'm applying some steam oil to any of the moving parts inside these blocks. I'm wondering whether the pump is not running on steam because there's some sort of a hydraulic lock taking place in the shuttle piston. That would prevent the slide valve from moving the correct distance. And because these four small o-rings are sealing the piston very well, the water just could not get out. I'm not even sure whether o-rings on a shuttle piston are a good idea. If this doesn't work, maybe I should take the pump apart and make a stainless steel shuttle piston without an o-ring and see whether or not that gives better results. The only problem, of course, is there would be metal-to-metal -metal contact between the cylinder and piston, which, over time, would wear much worse than the silicone o-rings would. I shall think on this further. Here's the shuttle piston top cap going back in place. No gasket used here, although I think I probably will fit a gasket once I get the pump to work reliably. And the usual caution, if you're doing this, do not over-tighten the bolts. This is not a cylinder head from a car. The last thing to do is to refit the oil line and connect some compressed air. And not unsurprisingly, as before with compressed air, the pump works perfectly. If I put my finger on top of the valve rod, look what happens. It shortens the stroke and it really goes fast. And why am I doing this? Well, I'm trying to make the pump malfunction, but it doesn't seem to want to. It's running quite well. I think it's time to light the gas burner under the boiler and connect the steam line. And guess what? It didn't work. But I at least have a solution. It's a big hammer. When I tap the top of the shuttle piston, it starts working immediately. Let's take another look at this in slow motion. Watch the exhaust pipe. Did you see how much water came out of the exhaust pipe initially? This running on steam problem is increasingly looking like it's something to do with a hydraulic lock. The pump is running, pumping water, and it's doing its job. That's all that I really want. Once upon a time, I used this pump to supply water to a coal-fired boiler that I used to have. And even then, I used to have to tap the shuttle cylinder to make it start. After I took the pump out of service, I ran it for a while on compressed air. After which, when I recently tried it, it didn't run at all. And I draw the conclusion that over time, the combination of disuse and something in the steam oil making the o-rings sticky was the reason why the pump would not work at all. So I'm going to dismantle the pump again and make a shuttle piston from stainless steel without fitting o-rings. And if that doesn't work, I'll groove the stainless steel to fit some o-rings. That's about it for the narration in this video. I'm going to leave the pump running until the end. At one point I slow it down to 25% of its normal speed and the sound is amazing. In this particular clip the strange sound you can hear are the balls bouncing in the valve chest. Stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.
please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.